What's up everyone? Sam here from ByteByBite.com and in this video I want to share with you my goal setting strategy for 2021 and why I've sort of changed from the traditional methods of setting goals to following this new strategy. Plus I'm going to show you exactly how you can apply this strategy to your life as well so that we can all work together to achieve our goals in the next year. And if you want tons more videos just like this on developing as a software engineer and preparing for your coding interviews, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe down below. It really helps the channel and we're releasing new videos like this every week. So I don't know if you're anything like me, but I've always been the kind of person where I get really excited at the beginning of the year about setting new goals. I'll set those goals, I'll really sit down, I'll follow all the like recommended strategies of setting SMART goals or, and making sure that my goals are really specific about the things that I want to achieve. But then I still find myself by month two or month three into the year completely falling off the wagon. And so that's why I fundamentally changed the way that I'm approaching goals. And I want to show you how to do that too. But first I want to acknowledge sort of why current goal setting strategies don't really work for me. Because there are a couple specific things that I've realized that these are reasons why when I set these goals, I never actually end up succeeding at sticking with those goals and really following through them for the long term. And this will help you to understand kind of why I'm shifting the way that I'm approaching this. And if you've experienced these same sort of issues, I think this will really help you too. The first reason is that I have limited control over the outcome of those goals. Like, let's say that I set a goal that I want to make, uh, or like, let's say I set a goal that I want to get a job at X company this year. Now, there are lots of things that I can do to work towards that goal, but at the end of the day, I don't have control over that outcome. I can't tell that company they have to hire me. No matter what I do, there is no guarantee that I'm gonna get that outcome. And so I really struggle with goals where I don't have full control over the outcome because it always kind of feels like a crapshoot, right? It feels like I'm working towards this thing, but then at the end of the day, it, like, it's out of my control. So I really wanted to think about how I can bring this more in my control. Number two is that I find a lot of times that as I'm working towards a goal, the desired outcome that I have changes over time. A simple example would be with this YouTube channel. When I started this YouTube channel, I was excited to get 100 people subscribed to the channel. Then when I got to 100 people, I was no longer satisfied with that. I was like, okay, now I want 1,000 people. And then when I got to 1,000, I was like, how do we have 10,000 people? And now we're around 50,000 and I want to get to that 100,000 and beyond. And so my goals change. And when I set a goal, I don't have that perspective. I don't have that foresight about what I'm actually going to want when I get there. And so I found that it's really hard to set goals that are going to reflect how I feel in the future. And finally, is just that I lose excitement over time. Right, if we set a really big goal, let's say that we set a goal that we expected to take the entire year to achieve, then it's really hard to stay excited for an entire year about this thing because initially you have that excitement, but then it becomes a grind. Right? Most of achieving goals is about grinding on these little things, about making that very incremental progress, doing these things that don't feel like they're having any real impact. And so for these three reasons, I wanted to change the way that I think about my goal set. And I've actually shifted the way that I'm thinking about it for this year into a three-step sort of framework that I want to share with you now that really accounts for these and allows me to be a much more flexible in my goal setting and also make sure that I'm continuing to make progress towards my goals. So here's how this goal setting process works. And it's kind of a hierarchical thing. And this is actually very similar to the way that we teach our students to prepare for their interviews in six weeks interview ready. But this is the framework that I want you to think about following. And step one of the framework is to set a North Star. And this is very specific because a North Star is different from setting an actual like specific goal. Right? A North Star, rather than saying, I specifically want to achieve this, what I'm always doing when I'm thinking about setting a goal is, what is the direction that I want to go? I don't know how far I want to go in that direction or how long I'm going to want to go in that direction. But if I know the direction, then I can work in that general direction. Let's say, for example, that I wanted to get a job at a great company. And so I want to get better at interviewing. And what I would think about is for my North Star, rather than saying I want to get a job at company X, I want to get better at interviewing. 
And I'm going to focus on that as being my North Star because that is something that I can really take action on and I can make progress towards rather than saying like picking something that's out of my control. Another example would be similar to like with the YouTube channel example. If I wanted to grow a YouTube channel, my North Star would be I want to grow this channel. Right? That would be as simple as it gets. I don't need to be really complex about like, oh, I want to grow the channel to this many people by doing this exact thing or anything like that. That's beside the point right now. The North Star sits above everything else. The North Star is not our goal. It's guiding the direction that our goal is going in. So I want to start with that kind of guiding light. And for each of the main things that I want to focus on, for each of my main goals, I'm going to set that North Star. I'm going to set that direction that I'm going to go in. Now, step number two is that rather than set specific outcomes that I want to achieve for each of those North Stars, I'm going to set action goals. And very specifically, what this means is I'm going to set a goal where my goal is to establish a habit or establish a routine of action that I think is going to get me towards that, that is going to move me towards my North Star. So for each North Star, I'm going to say, okay, well, this is generally what I'm trying to achieve. And so this is an action plan that I think is going to get me there. I'm going to go back to these two examples of interviewing and building a YouTube channel because I think they're really simple examples, but, and they're going to be relevant here, but let's consider what this would look like. So for interview prep, let's say I wanted to get better at interviews so that I can ultimately uh, land a job at a company that I'm really excited about. Right? My North Star is how do I get to a great company? And how do I move, continue to move in that direction? So I might set an action goal of saying, I am going to spend 30 minutes a day preparing for my interviews. Right? This is very different than what we would normally do, which is to say, okay, well, I want to land a job at this company. Right? Instead of taking that thing that is outside of our control, we're bringing this back into what can we actually control? What is a thing that I can literally do and how can I establish a habit around that? So I did talk a lot about the kind of habit formation uh, side of this in a video that I did on Atomic Habits by James Clear. Definitely recommend checking out that video or, or, and or picking up the book because lots of really good stuff on habit change. But really my goal when I'm doing this is to think about how I develop the habit. If we look at the YouTube example, maybe I think if I grow my channel, one consistent action that I could take is publishing a video every week. Right? If I publish a video every week, then I think that that is going to help me grow my channel. And so I can focus on just establishing that habit, establishing that consistent progress, rather than worrying about, oh, am I achieving that specific outcome? And now step number three, the final step to this process, is that we are going to regularly stop and reassess our progress. Essentially, the way that we're approaching this is we're saying that like I have this North Star, I have this direction that I want to go, and I'm creating a hypothesis that if I do X action, if I take X action consistently, it's going to move me closer to that North Star. And so what you want to do is every month or every two months or set sort of a reasonable time frame for yourself, stop and reassess and say, am I actually making progress towards that goal? We figured that if we do X, then we will accomplish Y, but are we? Like if I am spending 30 minutes a day preparing for my interviews, if I'm spending 30 minutes a day, let's say we get more specific and we're like doing practice problems every day. After a month, am I actually seeing more success solving these problems? Am I having an easier time? Let me stop and assess. And if not, maybe I want to change tap. If I'm publishing YouTube videos every week and I think that I will get, you know, X number of subscribers from doing that, but I'm not seeing those results then maybe I want to stop and reassess and say, maybe I was wrong in my hypothesis and this is working, but it'll take longer. Maybe I'm taking the wrong approach. So every month or so, we, I'll stop and reassess to see if that daily work is actually taking me towards my goal. If not, this is the time where I'll stop and I'll, re, I'll kind of tweak the actions that I'm taking. I've talked a lot about this this year in terms of following a path and finding, a, finding someone who can teach you like a step-by-step -step process, this is a great opportunity to do something like that. Find someone who knows how to do the thing that you wanna do and follow their lead. Have them tell you what are the actions that you need to take based on my experience, based on teaching other people that will get you to this. And so that is how you take this kind of high-level abstract goal and get really specific.
right? We're going to start with that North Star. What is that direction that we're going? That's going to allow us to adapt over time because we're not setting a specific goal. We're not saying, I want a thousand YouTube subscribers. We're saying, I want to grow my channel. And then eventually, we may get to the point where that is no longer our goal. And that's okay. We can shift our North Star. But as we progress, those sort of specific metrics can continue. We can continue moving in that direction. We don't have to fundamentally change our goal. Number two, we're going to set that action goal, right? This is much easier for us to just take consistent action than it is for us to try and force a specific outcome that we don't fully have control of. So we're shifting that goal to be something that we really do have complete control over. And then finally, number three, regularly stopping and reassessing the progress so that we know, are we moving in the right direction? Is this action goal the goal that we actually want and continuing to adapt and adjust from it? And so with that, that's how I am doing my goal setting in 2021. I hope this was helpful for you. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and subscribe. It really, really helps the channel. And with that, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.